Hi guys, Stefan here from pilothub.co.uk. So I'm going to make a quick video on uh, the basics of becoming a pilot in the UK. Let's begin. Now, to captain a uh, commercial airliner in the UK, you need a ATPL, an Air Transport Pilot's Licence. And there are three main ways of getting there. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the modular route. Now, the modular route is the sort of pay-as-you-go route. Um, basically, it's the cheapest way of getting your licence. Um, it will cost you anywhere from sort of 60 to 70,000 pounds onwards. Um, and in terms of time, it takes usually around 18 months uh, is sort of the minimum time, uh, but it can be stretched out as long as you like. The whole point of modular is it is fully flexible. Uh, you train how you want to train. Um, the way it's structured is you'll first start off doing your PPL, your private pilot's license. Now, your private pilot's license is the sort of very basic license you'll uh, get, um, lasts a lifetime, but it basically means you can go out, rent an aircraft, and fly you and your mates around. Uh, from there, you'll go on to your ATPL theory and your hour building. Now, ATPL theory, this is by far the most difficult part of pilot training. Um, it is 14 exams, all written exams, uh, and you need a pass mark of 75% in every single one. Uh, they take a long time to get through. It can take 12 months just to get through the exams. Uh, so don't underestimate them at all. Uh, the other part, hour building, you will need to get around 150 to 200 hours um, of flight time before you can actually continue and do your commercial license. Um, so essentially this is you going out, renting an aircraft, flying it around and enjoying yourself. Once you've done both of those, you move on to your CPL, MEP, MEIR. Now, I appreciate I am throwing just a lot of letters at you here, so I'll go over them very quickly. The CPL is your commercial pilot's license. Uh, this is very, very similar to the PPL. The difference is it's done on what's called a complex aircraft. Uh, this basically means it's got a variable pitch prop. Uh, basically, the, pop, the prop on the front of the aircraft can turn like that. Uh, it's also got a retractable landing gear as well. And ultimately, with a commercial pilot's license, you can be paid for your flying. Uh, from there, the MEP, which is your multi-engine piston rating. So up till now, you've got what's called an SEP, uh, a single engine piston rating. Basically, you can fly an aircraft with a piston engine and it's only got one of them. Multi-engine piston, pretty self-explanatory an airplane that's got two piston engines or more. Uh, from there, your MEIR, multi-engine instrument rating. Now, again, this uh, basically means uh, you can fly an aircraft with more than one engine, and you can fly it in cloud, you can carry out instrument approaches, you can fly in airways, uh, which are essentially motorways of the sky. Um, you can do all that great stuff. Once you've got all three of those, you're on to the final part, which is your APS MCC. The MCC is the multi-crew coordination course. It used to be called the MCC Jock, which was a multi-crew coordination course and a jet orientation course. Now they've sort of combined the two uh, into quite an advanced course and you're trained on a specific jet such as an A320 or a 737 in a simulator. And the whole point of this is now to make sure you're ready to go from flying single piloted aircraft to multi-crewed aircraft, such as commercial airliners. Once you've done all those, you have what's called a frozen ATPL. Now, a frozen ATPL obviously isn't a full ATPL, but it's enough for you to go and get a job with an airline. Uh, to get your full ATPL, you will need 1,500 hours um, of flight time, and you'll basically carry out a, uh, another skills test, um, and then you're sort of clear from then to uh, captain a large aircraft. Uh, the same applies to all three routes as well. Uh, but that's basically it as a quick overview of the modular. Uh, and next is the uh, integrated route. Right, so the integrated route. Uh, the integrated route is more expensive than the modular, but everything is sort of pre-planned out for you uh, and is usually done in around 18 months time. So with the integrated route, uh, this has to be certain sort of specially qualified schools that can uh, provide this. Uh, so places like L3 Harris, uh, CAE, they all offer an integrated route. Uh, and the way it works with integrated is initially you'll start off with your ATPL theory. So this will all be classroom based uh, and it will take usually around nine months, between six and nine months. And uh, 
basically you'll go to school like you uh, would when you're a kid. Uh, you'll study for the exams. You'll get them all done and out the way straight away. From there, you'll go on to our building. So most of these uh, schools will fly you out to somewhere like New Zealand uh, or the US, somewhere where the weather's quite nice. And basically you'll be trained up, do some basic training uh, on an aircraft. And then you'll go out, you'll fly it around, you'll build your hours up, um, ready to move on to the next part. Now, because obviously you haven't got a PPL, you skip the PPL with the integrated. At that point, you can't go and fly sort of your mates around and things like that. You basically follow sort of selected routes uh, that the school have made up um, and follow a full training plan. Once you've got your hours though, and uh, for this you actually don't need quite as many as you do with uh, the modular route, you move on to your CPL, MEP and MEIR. And again, we've talked about these with the modular route, it's exactly the same, it allows you to fly aircraft uh, that you can now be paid for and fly aircraft with more than one engine and fly them in bad weather. And then again, from there, onto your APS MCC, so you can learn to fly uh, with more than one crew member. Uh, and that's basically it for the integrated course. Uh, like I said, this one is the quickest, but this is going to cost you sort of 90 to 100,000 pounds plus. Right, finally is the MPL route, the multi pilot license route. Now, with this one, this is usually sponsored by an airline. You will still have to pay for it. It is still going to cost you uh, probably 80 to 90,000 pounds plus. Um, but the idea is with this is you're sort of fast tracked into a jet and you've got a pretty much guaranteed job at the end of it. Uh, the way this works is again, same with the integrated, you start out with your uh, ATPL theory. From there, you'll go on to what's called core training. So this is basically uh, the very, very, very basic flying training, enough just to get you solo, um, and that's pretty much it for the core training. From there, the basic flight training. So this is the equivalent of doing your CPL, etc. Uh, moving on then to the intermediate training. So this is you've now finished in the aircraft, you've moved on to the simulator. So this will be in something like a 737 or an A320 simulator. It depends on the airline that obviously has sponsored the course, uh, what aircraft they fly. So something like the Generation EasyJet program, you're going to be put into an A320 sim. And essentially, this is the start of your type rating. You are going to be taught exactly uh, how to fly that aircraft, how to fly to that airline's SOPs, their standard operating procedures, uh, and basically you will fly it exactly how they want you to fly it. And then finally, the advanced and type rating. This is the final bit of the MPL. So with this, uh, you basically carry out uh, your type rating skills test, which gives you your initial type rating, and you'll do your base training. This, again, with the airline, but this time it's your first time flying a real jet, uh, and essentially you'll do five takeoff and landings um, in a full-size jet, and uh, you're good to go. You're good to be put on the line and start your line training with an airline. Um, the difference with the MPL is at no point do you have a single pilot license, which means you couldn't go out and rent an aircraft and fly it around. The other risks as well, as we've seen recently with things like COVID, if that airline was to go under or to get into any sort of financial trouble uh, and you were unfortunately made redundant, you haven't got a frozen ATPL. Um, you've, in fact, you won't get an ATPL until again you've got 1500 hours and then you're free to work for any airline. With an MPL, you're kind of stuck with the airline that's trained you. So if they get rid of you, you could seriously find yourself uh, in trouble with finding another job. Hopefully, another airline will be willing to take you on. But again, there's the, it's going to be a lot harder than it would be with uh, going either the modular or the integrated route. But obviously, the plus side is you have got an almost guaranteed job at the end, assuming you pass everything. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the free routes. Right, so finally, let's talk about what you actually need now to begin your training. Uh, realistically speaking, there are three things you need to sort of arrange before you start your training. Number one, funding. Now, it doesn't matter what route you go down, it's going to be expensive. Um, as I said, modular is the cheapest route, but like I said, you are still looking a minimum of £60,000 uh, if, if you sort of shop around and that. That's a lot of money, no matter what. Uh, there are a number of ways you can sort of uh, acquire the funding. Um, obviously, number one is you've already got 
cash in the bank, which if you have, amazing, well done, go ahead, get started with your training. Um, in terms of uh, sort of help with funding, unfortunately, there's not really anything out there. You can't get a student loan. Uh, I just want to make that one really clear now because I've been asked this on our TikTok channel a number of times. A student loan will not pay for your training. There are a number of universities out there who are offering a uh, aviation management degree or something similar with pilot training. If you read the small print, you have to pay extra for the pilot training. Uh, that's an extra cost on top of the course. Your student loan will not cover that. Yes, you may get a uh, maintenance loan or a maintenance grant, but again, take it from someone who's been there and done that. That will not stretch to paying for pilot training. Uh, by the time you've paid your rent, you've paid your bills, food, things like that, you are not going to have the money left over. Unfortunately, it's the way it is. Uh, in terms of loans, you've got a couple of options. Number one is an unsecured loan. An unsecured loan is your basic bank loan. Uh, you'll tend to get these up to around £25,000. Obviously, it depends entirely on your own circumstances. Um, obviously, that's not going to pay for the training up in sort of full, but it's one option. It's a way of getting at least a bit of money together if you've already got some saved. The other option is a secured loan. Now, a secured loan is a little bit like a mortgage. Basically, the bank will give you the money, but it needs to be secured against a property that has enough equity in it. Uh, this could be a property you own, a property your parents own, another family member, whatever. Obviously, uh, the person who owns the property has to be the one that gets the loan. You can't go and get a loan on your parents' house. Um, and the risks, obviously, is if you don't pay it back, then the bank will come along and repossess the house. Uh, but those are a few options to sort of help you start looking at funding. I'll do another video uh, another time, sort of going into uh, more detail of the options. Number two. Class 1 medical. Now, I've put a little asterisk next to this uh, for a reason I'll go into in a minute. The Class 1 medical is the medical you will need to continue with commercial flight training. Um, now, if you haven't already got one, there are only two places at the moment, at the time of recording this video, in the UK you can get one, uh, Heathrow and Birmingham. Uh, if you head over to the CAA website, I'll put a link down in the description. Um, you can book your initial class one medical and you'll go along and they'll test everything from your hearing, your eyesight, your urine, your blood, uh, your um, nervous system and a full sort of check over and your medical history. Uh, and basically then make sure everything's nice and safe. And if it is, you get your class one medical there and then and you can go ahead and do your commercial training. Now, Again, I'll do another video uh, in the future going into a lot more detail with this. Uh, but the reason for the little asterisk is basically if you go down the modular route and you do your PPL, uh, for a PPL, you only technically need a class two medical. Uh, class two can be done by any aeromedical examiner. Um, there are hundreds of them all up and down the country. And the sort of requirements are a lot less strict to a class one. Now, what I would say as a bit of a warning is if you are 100% sure you want to do your uh, commercial license, go and get a class one anyway. A class one includes a class two license. Your class one only lasts for one year. Your class two, depending on your age, will last for five years. Now, this may mean that before you actually get onto your commercial uh, training where you need your class one, it may have expired. But the important thing is, you know you can get one. The last thing you want to do is go get a class two medical now, get through all your PPL, get through your ATPLs, get through your uh, fit, get through your hour building, and then it turns out, for whatever reason, it was something you didn't know about and you can't get a class one. I've seen it happen, it's not great. Um, so that's a hell of a lot of money that you've spent up until that point. So yeah, go and get yourself a class one now. Finally, a basic understanding of maths and physics. And again, I'll put a little asterisk next to this um, for a very good reason. Now, again, if you're going down the modular route, you're absolutely fine. You don't need GCSEs. You don't need an A-levels. You don't need a degree or anything like that. All you need is a basic understanding of maths and physics so that you can get through the exams and you will learn how an aircraft flies and you'll be able to carry out your mental maths as you're flying to calculate things like top of descent. Now, obviously, if you have really struggled in the past with your GCSEs and things like that, 
I'm not going to lie, the exams are going to be difficult. The ACPL theory exams are the equivalent of a bachelor's degree. That's how difficult they are. All is not lost, though. Um, there's nothing stopping you getting ahead now. Get studying. Build your maths and physics understanding. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there that will help you with your mental maths and things like that. Um, it's not particularly difficult maths and difficult physics. It's just knowing what to apply and where. So I recommend go and get any app that's on the uh, App Store to help with your mental maths and uh, you'll get through it a, lot, a little bit easier. Now, the reason for the asterisk is it obviously depends what route you go. I can sit here all day and tell you you don't need GCSEs to become a pilot. Now, ultimately, it comes down to whoever's hiring. There are a number of airlines out there which will hire you with no GCSEs, just purely the your sort of uh, license. But there are some out there that will ask for GCSEs. If you haven't got them, don't panic. You can retake your GCSEs at any point in life. Um, so if you do need them in the future, you can just go and get them. Uh, obviously, I appreciate it's a bit harder than that. You've actually got to study for them and whatnot. But ultimately, if you didn't get them in school, it's not the end of the world. The other thing as well is if you go down the integrated or the MPL route, the schools themselves might say you must have GCSEs or A-levels to begin the training. Um, most of the time, the reason for this is basically just to cut down on the number of applicants. Um, as you saw, you can imagine airlines, uh, schools, everyone get thousands and thousands of thousands of applicants every year. No one can train that many people. Um, and so they've just got to find a way to cut that list down. And the easiest way is by asking for GCSEs. So whilst, like I said, you do only technically need a basic understanding of maths and physics just be prepared that it might be a little bit more difficult to find a school that will accept you or find a job at the end of it if you haven't got at least GCSEs. Uh, but other than that, that's basically it for sort of the start of how to become a pilot. Like I said, if you guys like this video, uh, I'll make some more in the future going over each of the different parts individually, going into a lot more detail. Uh, so if that's something you want to see, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, like the video, whatever it is you need to do, and uh, I'll see you next time.